Hey everybody, so happy Wednesday. Hope you all are doing well. Today, I want to show you one of my favorite children's books. It's Charlotte's Web um, by E.B. White. And I can't wait till my boys are a little bit older so we can read it together. So just flipping through the pages and seeing the names of like Wilbur and Charlotte, obviously, Fern, Templeton, Mr. Zuckerman, anyway, um, just conjures up a lot of happy memories of my mom reading it to me when I was little and to my siblings as well. Anyway, so here's a little excerpt that I wanted to read to you from the end of the story um, when Wilbur is at the county fair and Charlotte has just completed her um, magnum opus, which is just a really fun word, meaning her egg sac full of soon-to-be baby spiders in it. Anyway, I'll find it here. Somewhere I put, I put a little sticky, little sticky note in there so I'd get it right. I wouldn't embarrass myself on camera. <laughs> anyway, so here goes. Charlotte said Wilbur dreamily, are you really going to have 514 children? If nothing happens, yes, she said. Of course, they won't show up till next spring. Wilbur noticed that Charlotte's voice sounded sad. What makes you sound so downhearted? I should think you'd be terribly happy about this. Oh, don't pay any attention to me, said Charlotte. I just don't have much pep anymore. I guess I feel sad because I won't ever see my children. What do you mean you won't see your children? Of course you will. We'll all see them. It's going to be simply wonderful next spring in the barn cellar with 514 baby spiders running around all over the place. And the geese will have a new set of goslings and the sheep will have their new lambs. Maybe, said Charlotte quietly. However, I have a feeling I'm not going to see the results of last night's efforts. I don't feel good at all. I think I'm languishing, to tell you the truth. Wilbur didn't understand the word languish, and he hated to bother Charlotte by asking her to explain. But he was so worried he felt he had to ask. What does languishing mean? It means I'm slowing up, feeling my age. I'm not young anymore, Wilbur. But I don't want to work. I don't want you to worry about me. This is your big day today. Look at my web. Doesn't it show up well with the dew on it? Anyway, the story goes on. But on my main topic today, I just actually learned that languishing is actually a real mental health diagnosis that is suddenly in the spotlight. Um, as we all know, the pandemic has affected uh, just about every aspect of our lives um, over the last year, and it looks like on the top of the, you know, the lingering physical symptoms of COVID, um, many people are also struggling to cope with the emotional aspects as well. So I was reading a bit about this and I found out that psychologists look at mental health on a spectrum. Um, so at one end there is flourishing, which means that a person is thriving, um, full of energy and enthusiasm and looking to the future with hope and purpose. And then at the other end um, of the spectrum is depression, which is a word that we're all familiar with, um, where a person suffers from a constant feeling of sadness and isn't motivated or interested in doing, you know, in doing anything. But then in between those two extremes is languishing. Um, they're actually calling it the neglected middle child of mental health um, because it hasn't really been much on the radar um, at all. Um, you don't have the typical symptoms of mental illness, but you're also not at your full capacity, your full joy capacity. <laughs> um, you're basically just like not motivated to work hard, you can't concentrate or focus, and you generally have this like blah, empty feeling um, at, that there's nothing very fun or joy-filled on the horizon. Um, and I'm sure that many people can relate to that feeling right now, especially those who have lost loved ones or those who are feeling really stretched and st um, stressed by still having to work from home and take care of their kids at the same time or who's, you know, affect who don't have jobs as a result of the pandemic. Anyway, I am sure there are some really concrete suggestions or write-ups or whatever out there um, for what to actually do about languishing. Um, and I won't delve into that here I'm no psychologist, um, but I do think it's probably safe to say that one thing that every single person 
um, can do to combat languishing or, or any other ailment for that matter is to spend time with another person and see if there's even one little thing that you can do to make their day um, go a little better or just bring a little bit of joy to someone's life. And another thing that suddenly crosses my mind um, about how to, you know, if you're struggling with your feeling blah or empty or, or nothing or, um, you know, you don't feel anything. And that is something that someone once told me about. You think about three things to be thankful for. And then once you've been thinking about that, then it's amazing, you know, suddenly life just seems brighter and, and more joyful. Um, Anyway, but that was a total tangent because the spending time with a person and make, trying to make someone's day go a little better is actually was well, kind of like the point of my video. <laughs> anyway, in case anyone is interested in further details on this subject, I'll put a link down below um, in the description of this video and whatever to the article that I read and I'm sure it'll send you on to other things. But what I did want to sign off with is another little reading from Charlotte's Web, which I think will speak for itself. And I hope you all enjoy it. And again, I did put another sticky note in. <laughs> anyway, I actually just tore, post it in half. Okay. So this is, again, a conversation between Charlotte and Wilbur. So um, Wilbur, the, the little pig, is, is, was overcome by emotion. And uh, it says, a tear came to Wilbur's eye and he said, Oh, Charlotte, to think that when I first met you, I thought you were cruel and bloodthirsty. When he had recovered from his emotion, he spoke again. Why did you do all this for me? He asked. I don't deserve it. I've never done anything for you. You have been my friend, replied Charlotte. That in itself is a tremendous thing. I wove my webs for you because I liked you. After all, what's a life anyway? We're born, we live a little while, we die. A spider's life can't help being something of a mess with all this trapping and eating flies. By helping you, perhaps I was trying to lift up my life a little trifle. Heaven knows anyone's life can stand a little of that. Well, said Wilbur, I'm no good at making speeches. I haven't got your gift for words. But you have saved me, Charlotte, and I would gladly give my life for you. I really would. I'm sure you would, and I thank you for your generous sentiments. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that, and I hope you liked the message. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Um, and again, I, I hope you were cheered by this video and encouraged to keep going. So I'll see you all next time.